but what I'm going to do today, I'm going to take you guys along with me um, through that whole process, is I'm actually going to um, see what the extent of my saddle fitting knowledge is. That's breakfast. Oh, that's good. Banana yogurt smoothie for breakfast. The way to go. What do you want? What do you want? You want to go chase the horses, don't you? Huh? That morning feeling when you have to trade your slippers for horse riding long boots. Uh, you know, the struggle's really real. Welcome to that horse life. Let's go. Yep. Let's go. I did it. Where's your stick? You got a stick? Where's your stick? Yeah, it's in here. Where's it? Where's your stick? Do you rather lose your stick? Oh no. Give me. Give me, I lost your stick. I lost your stick. Where's your stick? Look, where's your stick? Give me, I found it. Look. Give me. What's this? Oh, what's this? Is this your stick? Is this your stick? Come, bring your stick. Bring your stick. So we have quite an interesting day today. Um, I've been suspecting for a while that uh, Charlie's saddle is not really fitting him too well. So, um, oh, dead bird. Really strange. Um, we've been finding a lot of dead bird like dead doves and stuff lately so we're trying to figure out what is the cause of this but um yeah when I get to the bottom of that investigation I'll let you know um back to Charlie's saddle so yeah we've been suspecting for a while that it's um not really fitting him that well um he's been rather bucky and really really like annoyed and um how do I say, just like agitated under saddle. Um, it's either, the funny thing is though, he, when I start working him, like he's, he's really agitated and irritated and stuff in the beginning. But as we go along and he kind of settles and warms up, um, he really just kind of settles down and forgets about it and gets on with his work and actually works really, really well. He's down and round and soft and, um, so I'm wondering if it's a, a combination of um, a bit of initial muscle stiffness to start with and um, then as well the saddle, I, I definitely think the saddle is a problem. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, Western Shop, a lady from Lisa from Western Shop coming to 
uh, refit my saddle today and confirm that and then um, she'll also be bringing a few other saddles for us to try should mine not fit so but what I'm gonna do today I'm gonna take you guys along with me um, through that whole process is I'm actually going to um, see what the extent of my saddle fitting knowledge is and I'm going to um, fit my saddle now um, oh look who's here Jolly say hello to everyone say hello to everyone hello big boy hello big boy it's like mum wears a treat hello girl -o. can you two not fight here behind me please Oh, are we going to fit your saddle today? Yeah, so um, I'm going to go fit the saddle now before Lisa comes. And um, I'm going to kind of give you a rundown of what I think um, is wrong and where I think that possibly it doesn't fit or it does fit or... Um, yeah, and then what we're going to do is we're going to ask Lisa, then she'll obviously do her assessment and then we'll see how good my knowledge is and if I'm spot on or not. Um, at the moment, what I can tell you is I'm predicting that in the front, um, it might the saddle might be a little narrow because it's kind of sitting at an angle down towards his back. I'll show you in a, in a second. Um, so yeah, let's see what Lisa has to say. I'm hoping, I'm a little nervous if I'm honest. Um, I'm hoping that I don't need a new saddle and that she, she can... Um, help us figure out a way to make mine fit um that's really not gonna cause any discomfort and pain to him obviously but um yeah because you know these things cost an arm and a leg and a house and a car and you know some of these things are basically deposits on a new car here in south africa and um i mean i saw one the other day for 96,000 rand um you can get a really nice car for that price so well you could. Um, that's a really, really good deposit on a new car. So um, I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. Um, and even if it does come to that, I'm definitely not spending 96,000 Rand on a saddle. So um, yeah, let's get this fatty in and uh, let's see what we're working with. Uh, just an update on uh, Charlie. So he's been, um, come on. He's been out of work for quite some time. Um, we've had quite a few things going on, nothing wrong with him or anything. Um, I started a business and a lot of just like personal life things happening. Nothing bad, nothing hectic, don't worry. Um, but um, yeah, as, as a result of that, he kind of took about four years off. Terrible, I know. Um, which I think did him good. He did a lot of growing up in that time. Um, he is now nine. And um, come on. I just got to the point where I'm like, I have this amazing horse standing in the stable that should be working. And he's not, he's going to waste. He has a lot of talent, really keen to learn. So kind of just got my ass into gear and um, here we are. And then obviously, you know, as life would have it, um, you gain momentum and then there's always something that uh, gets in the way i.e. the saddle doesn't fit, the horse's back is sore, you know, general horsey problems. So, um, yeah, let's see, let's see what the saddle fit lady has to say. So uh, just a disclaimer quickly, um, before we actually go ahead with this whole spiel, 
Um, I'm by no means, this is by no means a tutorial video how to fit a saddle. I'm not a professional saddle fitter. Um, this is just uh, me testing my saddle fitting knowledge to see um, how much I actually do know and um, kind of make for interesting video for you guys as well. So uh, the professional saddle fitter will be here. You'll probably see it in the next clip. And um, she'll be giving her professional opinion on the whole saga. So um, please don't troll the comments and be like, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. I know, I don't know what I'm talking about. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm uh, testing it out to see how much I actually do know. So um, reserve your comments until after the video. And uh, play nice, kids. Um, we're all here for a good time. So uh, let's see what we can learn. Maybe you guys learn a few things from from me as well and um, that's only my hope in any case so uh, before Charlie eats my hand let's get on with it okay guys so this is my saddle it is a Barnsby Club um, 17 and a half inch and um, it's in pretty good condition I've had it for sure let's say about eight years now so um it served its purpose and um let's see what the extent of my saddle fitting knowledge is so um for me here all looks pretty good it's sturdy it's in good condition it's in pretty good shape so um yep let's fit it and see how we go okay so i'm gonna start with what i believe are the areas to to look for in terms of tightness and fitting and that type of stuff so from what i can see here stand still boy um so for me i would say this gap here is a little bit too big at the moment um, it's almost like it's sitting on top of his shoulder here, kind of. Um, I guess that's why it's narrow at the top, why I think it's narrow at the top. Um, I know that we also need to check here for tightness for me. It might be a little bit tight here already. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see what Lisa's professional opinion on that is. Um, again, at the back there needs to be quite a nice clearance all the way through which there is over there um, okay he's standing a bit skew now so that's why it looks a bit lopsided but um, there's a nice clearance for me through the back here um, the one thing I do notice and what took me off on this whole story to start off with is that if you look carefully you can see the saddle kind of slants downwards at an angle putting all the weight and pressure in this area um, and that is what I suspect is causing him a little bit of discomfort but we'll have to again we'll have to uh, wait and see what um, Lisa has to say about it um, the other thing is what I've noticed is my straps when they when I fasten the girth up the one is always longer than the other and I think you can see it now as well let's see yeah see the one is always longer than the other which shouldn't be because um, I definitely measured them off the horse and they do fit fine so my girth holes are always uneven which I guess is obviously not great um, so yeah that's what I'm predicting at the moment um, yeah, for me that slant is quite is quite hectic. So if you check here, the way it slants down, which means all the pressure is going to go towards his back. Um, so yeah, let's uh, see what she has to say. Um, all around, there's a pretty nice clearance, but yeah, I'm really worried about. This part here in the front, it seems to be rising quite above his shoulder. Bit of tightness here, but the main thing for me is 
all the pressure that's going down into the back of the saddle. So, um, yeah. You're strange looking. Kind of cute. But strange. Hello. What's your name? You're cute. I think I'll name you Jeremy. Yes. Have a good day then, Jeremy. Bye. If you see something crawling across the screen, don't panic. It's uh, just Jeremy. He is um, on the pole, like right here. That's normally where I mount you guys, but because he's occupying that space at the moment, I didn't want to disturb him or anything. So um, uh, I've had to mount you on the poles next, next door to him. So please, if you see a little cute bug thing crawling across the screen, uh, don't panic. It's just Jeremy. Gimme, what's going on here? Hey, that's for Charlie, not for you. and you actually start them up now. Mm -hmm. They last a bit long, longer. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not a bad thing. And then mentally they usually also yeah. <laughs> mentally they're also a bit better matured. Yes, yes. Okay. I assume he does not kick. No, he's super chilled. Oh no. It's horrible. No. Okay, let's stand a step back. straight. I just actually want to see if his hips are in alignment, uh, which it looks like it is. Okay, yeah. The next thing is the physio that I want to get out. Yes. And then his back is a bit sore. Right shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it sore from doing nothing? You. I like you too. Uh, what's his right shoulder is? It's a bit larger than the left. So it's so usually a, right. um, it's a confirmation thing. So they all have one shoulder that's bigger than the other Because I do um, a lot of trick training with him as well, so yes. bowing and, and does we normally go, but that's on the left side. So he goes, <laughs> yeah, he lifts the left. You really don't want to be addressed after right now. <laughs> so if you have a look, I always let the clients work themselves because it's interesting to see. So you'll yeah. see that the right is more developed. Oh, I see, yes. So when you ride, does he canter better towards the left and trot better to the right? Yes. Well, Italy. cantering, mind you, we haven't done in for yeah. ages because he just throws his head and he goes nuts. Okay. And I, I was obviously contributing that to the saddle and his back. Yes. Well, let's have um, a look. Also, what's really nice is when we take the um, the profile, you can see it on paper. Yes. Um, because sometimes. You can see it on the paper when you can't even see it. Even if you have a really good eye, you can't see yeah. it on a horse, but you can see it when it's drawn. Okay. okay. Um, Interesting. Since he was, he said about two, two. Okay. And any other times that there wasn't any lameness issues or things? No, there's been the odd abscess here and there, but that's it. Okay. Nothing. 
but yeah. because the, the, the crossbreeds usually there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you're saying at the moment you're throwing his head when you ask him to catch it. Can. So yeah, the head goes straight up and he just pulls. The funny thing is, and, I, and this is why I'm torn between, I know it's definitely the saddle and mm -hmm. there is obviously some pain in the back. I'm hoping it's not anything serious as in like a kissing spine serious because when I start him out, and I don't, if I get on today I'll show you, he's very um, agitated, uneasy, he does yeah, the whole... A bit of a yeah, but then as I move on, he completely settles, he's soft, he goes round, he goes down, and he so seems fine. That's usually muscle. Yeah, so maybe, maybe horse, initial stiffness and being cold. Horse, yeah, if a horse gets better with movement, it usually indicates that there's a muscle okay. issue. Yeah. If it gets worse, then it's bone or tendon. Yeah. Now you have to stand like a dressage. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Stay. Like, I, I don't know how. <laughs> Never have I been a dressmaker for me in my life. Come, Come on, boy. Be nice. <laughs> Come on. Do you want him to stand square? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Just, just that, that's that. That's okay. So what we do is we take the profile over the shoulder. Okay. Stand, big man. I'll show you the profile when we're done. Okay. Oops. All my clients with this food. <laughs> <laughs> then you take one, like a hand behind the shoulder. Okay. Because ideally, what we want is we want the sh the muscle behind the shoulder to be as close to or equal to the, the shoulder. shoulder. Okay. So that um, needs to fill out a lot. This is good. Is it okay? To what I'm used to. Okay. <laughs> with some clients, uh, especially because I see a lot of youngsters. Yeah. Um, We'll see now. Okay, then we take the 18th rip. Should I walk in forward? Yes, yes. Come, big man. Come on. But why? Why is this lady even here? Yeah. <laughs> I think the nurse is not the best. He has a bit phobia. Yeah, that's true. Okay, this so I'm going to ask you to pick up this front. Yeah. Go for it. Go fall over. I'm going left with you. Here we go. Okay, so that's there. <laughs> so that's his last one. That's the 18th. Okay, that's to where he can carry weight, which is quite good because you're quite tall. So yeah. we would like to give you as much space as possible. We're going to take the 16th rib. So that's the last rib that has mobility and four directions we from here the last two can only go um, in two directions where this one can go forward okay it's more flexible so we ideally want this as loose as possible okay and then the last one this way back when <laughs> all these fancy pictures and drawings and being a weather. Which we won't have a problem with. <laughs> yeah, no. Because um, he's flat as a barrel. Yeah. <laughs> Shame my thoroughbred. He was one of those that had a massive wither. And literally there was nothing that fit him. I can it imagine. Was, was Luckily, some... these days, it's a bit more advanced yeah. than that. Yeah, yeah. So, as you can see, the symmetry is not bad. Okay. Even though the right shoulder looks bigger yes it's a bit more angled okay I see than yeah. the left yeah so we're just gonna have to make sure when we pop the saddle and luckily it's a dressage saddle so it makes it a bit yeah. easier but it just stays clear doesn't have a big wither and you can see the bum is quite um like his lower back is quite symmetrical which is good okay good boy so, yes all these saddles are adjustable I suppose that's every, like all of them nowadays. Yes, uh, it's just like your prestigious. Yeah. Uh, for instance, they have to go on the machine, but okay. they still are very so adjustable. Okay. So I prefer this one to the to the Wintech. Yes. Um, yes. I still do prefer the RD or the Pessoa. 
but this we can make work if I okay. do some adjustments. On yeah, it. yeah. I just like the back panel is a bit yeah. better than the Wintec. The Wintec one is a bit sharper. Yeah, where this but this is, is, is still not as nice as the no. Prestige. Yeah. No. You can see. It's okay. Next. This is a 16 and a half inch, but it's okay. So the, the 16 and the 17 is the length that yes. way. Yes, so it's okay. the length from the side of my shoulder yeah. to the middle of the cantle straight up. Oh, okay. So this is my size. I okay. grow in a 16 and a half, even a 16 inch. But because you have really long legs, yes. we'd want to give you a bit more space for That's, your legs to yeah. come down in. Yeah. Um, this one will work too, but I still do prefer the Jessica's um, round panel at the yeah. back. Yeah. So this one we can also make work. Um, I, I just think that one has a bit more substance to it than this yeah. one. Still better than the Bates and the Wintec though. Yes. Also I would like to make it a bit wider. So. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And between the two, there's not a massive price difference. Yeah. It's around about like, do you math quickly? <laughs> it's so like this one six, is six grand. Yes. And, and that, that one is, is 34, 34. 36. Okay. So it's like an 8 grand difference. And your Bates? The Bates goes for 26, okay. and then yeah. I have the Bates Isabel here as well, but okay. that one goes for 14, uh, I think. <laughs> yeah, and saddles, but they are lovely. Oh, that is nice. Yes. So between the three Bates and Wintex, I prefer this one. This I'm one, yeah. Yes. Um, I personally like these. I think we might even be able to squeeze you into a 16 and a half in this specific this one. one. Yeah. Is this not? Um, is this still alright? Yeah. Here? Look, it's not it, as look like as I as said, the I would I would still like to make it wider, but it's a much softer line at the back. Okay, yeah. Than the Bates dressage and the Wintec. Yeah. So at least we have three options. Three yeah, options. Okay. okay. But I think in this one you would probably go 16 and a half inch. Mm. Okay. okay. There's a bit of a dip here. Yeah. Which means it might have been the saddle stand that okay. just took the flocking out of it. Okay. The dog's still eating his carrot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the panel itself is not bad. I'd like to even it out a bit, but it's not. It's not horrible. Okay. So let's pop, oh, yeah, pop it on. That. It's just a bit bent now from the cover. Let's pop it on. Hello, Bertie Lloyd. I know. I know. It's weird. Isn't it? Kill a horse that. dog. <laughs> I did not expect that. <laughs> why are you standing so funny? He's like just because, because you're here. Help, yeah. That's why. This is yeah. Guess there's someone here. That's why. Stand there. Oh boy. Oh man. Is that square enough? Yeah, that's okay. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Another boredom is going to start. Okay. So I can see the problem already. Was my prediction right? Yes, it was. <laughs> okay. So um, it's. It's about two sizes too narrow. I okay. know, it's horrible. So the whole thing is now, if you put your hand in and you feel it here, yeah, it's really tight. Yeah. So now imagine you standing there and having 60 kgs on yeah. your back. So and it's all yes. going downwards. Yes. So I have a feeling that's why he's also quite sensitive. Because yeah. if they hold here, yeah. it's going to translate all the way back. Yeah. Also to the front. Um, but mostly to the back, back. because it's closer to the back. Mm. And that's and why he's more sensitive here to yes. the back. It might also be, because none of us are perfect, that you also naturally sit to the right. Yes. Or he might actually tilt you to the right. Right. Um, so I think that's why the right bum is more sensitive yeah. than the left. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'd like this about two sizes wider. Okay. Then it might might work but <laughs> as far as I don't know the bonds bees very well but yeah. as far as I know they're not super adjustable no like a one size maybe but I, I'm yeah. not sure about two sizes yeah <sighs> okay <laughs> sorry. So I thought as much the nice thing though about it is it's not tight over his shoulders yeah it's literally just coming down on his yes. back 
but I think it's because it's it's too narrow. It's actually sitting above his shoulders. Yeah. So it, it wouldn't be a problem. But yeah, and I mean, even if he did gain a... There. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. And that's about two, two fingers, and that's usually about two balance yeah. sizes up. So it's not a case of just padding up, or it's that I whole... The, the problem is... What we're going to do now is if we lift it up, now we're tilting all the pressure forward. On the front, yeah. So now if you feel it, yeah. it's tight. Yeah. Also, if we lift it here, we have to have used something that goes all the way all through. All the way through, okay. And if we do it, we might fix it for a while. Yeah. But the thing is, it's not going to... Hey guys, uh, so it's been a little bit of time, like the day's kind of gone on since... Um, Lisa was here with the saddle fitting. Um, I didn't get the last bit of it because my battery died. So I just wanted to kind of fill you in on the conclusion of the whole exercise and uh, what happened after I left you there. Um, yeah, I've just got back from teaching. I did a little bit of teaching um, just now. So hence why I probably look like I've been through uh, for like a 10k run. Uh, it's really hot outside, so yeah, compared to the we the weather is really weird. Like this morning it was freezing cold, and uh, it's literally, I think it's close to about 29, 30 degrees at the moment. Um, so anyway, just to fill you in and conclude the whole saddle fitting saga. So basically, my prediction was right. Um, the saddle is a little bit narrow in front, therefore it's kind of sitting down on his back a little bit. Um, we also, as I suspected, did pick up that he has a bit of um, additional general muscular back pain and, and whatnot, um, which could also be causing him, well, it is causing him quite a bit of discomfort. Um, so I'm going to get the physio out as well, just to give him the once over and... Um, most probably the Cairo as well, because we suspect that his hip is maybe out, his left, um, his, yeah, his right hip. Um, so that's not great news all around, but um, I think the worst news of the day is that I need a new saddle, which is not really what I was bargaining for. Um, we did try a few saddles on, and I did ride in a few. I think I got a little bit of footage uh, just riding about in the field, not really training hectic or anything. So, I mean, he looks like an absolute uh, farm horse with his head in the air. And um, because I hadn't canted him for a while, Lisa wanted me to just give it a try and see how he reacted. And that just um, reaffirmed that there is definitely a uh, back issue there, muscular towards his lower back. Um, he's definitely got a bit of pain there because um, in the canter he kind of just shoves his nose right up in the air and just kind of pulls and runs a bit. Um, so he's not happy about something there. Um, so I tried a couple of saddles and the one that really s we did obviously get to a conclusion with one. Um, I'm pretty sure my uh, bank account is is not going to approve of that but um so i'm going to yeah so the one i chose or the one that fitted both me and and the horse um was i think in excess of about 37 thousand rand um not sure what that is in pounds or dollars but i will try and do the conversions for you and um put them in here just to give you an idea but, um, yeah, I'm not thrilled with that. Um, I was kind of hoping for a different outcome, but it is what it is, so we have to move forward now. Um, it is really expensive, especially since, you know, I'm just getting back into the riding again, and I will be competing um, as soon as I've sorted the saddle issue out, but um, it's a lot of money to put down for the beginning. So I think to start with, I'm going to look at maybe... Um, a few second-hand alternatives, so I'm going to see if I can't find the same saddle um, second-hand or something equivalent that fits um, in the second-hand range. Um, you get some really nice ones that are out there. I saw a few earlier, so I'm going to try and go that route and see if it's not maybe um, financially more feasible for me at the moment. Um, so yeah, let's let's see how that goes. Not 
a great outcome, but at the same time, um, it's done, it's out the way. I know now that it is a problem and it has to be addressed. So in the meantime, I'm going to get the, the physio out, possibly even the Cairo, depending on what the physio says. And um, let's get Charlie feeling nice and better and, and, and better in his back and working better as well. Um, and then take it from there. So you probably might see a lot of bareback riding in the next few days to come. Um, great for my abs, not so great for my back. But um, yeah, we'll see. We'll we'll see how that turns out. Um, maybe we'll have a few rodeos there, here and there. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give you guys an update um, on the rest of the day, and uh, hopefully, I'll take you with me training someday soon while well, insert some footage here of um, some previous training days just to give you an idea um, and yeah I'll take you through to that yard one day um, maybe in the next video or so kind of to give you a rundown on what we do what I'm doing with the horses in terms of the psychology side of things so um, that yard is a, a therapy riding yard for special needs children and um, they've recently acquired a few horses um, also rescue horses so um, ironically the horses also come with a whole bunch of baggage and issues and whatnot um, so I really have to work with them and kind of make them safe for the kids to ride um, and especially with therapy you know they play with a lot of balls and toys and things and throw things around so the horses really need to be desensitized to the point Hey guys, so you're probably noticing um, I'm in a different outfit. It's uh, kind of been a few days since uh, I last filmed uh, for obvious reasons. Um, I obviously had um, a nightmare of a blogging day um, the other day, hence running out of uh, battery and storage space. Um, so I learned these things as you go along and um, quite annoying. So better prepared going forward um, but yeah what I really wanted to chat to you about was I realized that you know we kind of can't have um, a vlog and not well in in my opinion I didn't want to give you a vlog or um, something that you're not going to gain value from even if it is something that you already know um, you know there might be other people that don't necessarily know everything um, there were certain aspects of obviously watching back on the footage where I was like hmm uh, that was kind of interesting um, I thought about those things before but um, didn't really take into account the impact they could have um, and what I'm basically talking about is in terms of the saddle fitting um, you know Lisa kind of took the whole saddle and she basically took it off the horse and checked you know the flocking and the kind of shape of it did it reach up and the first thing she said to me was um where does your saddle stand now we have um our tack standing inside the house in a in a cupboard somewhere purely because um well if you're south african you'll know that um nothing in this country stays in the hands of its rightful owner basically everything gets stolen so there is also a massive um, saddle stealing syndicate out and about and there's been um, quite a few cases of saddles being reported stolen so for that reason we don't keep our tack and stuff in um, tack rooms here unless you're in like a, a big yard and they um, can lock them up and keep them secure with cameras and all of that stuff um, so yeah I then said to her well I immediately knew that there was a problem there because where the saddle is standing is kind of on a um, underneath of a table um, in a cupboard where the cupboard door kind of pushes it closed a little bit and um, she's like yeah that definitely is a problem because um, it's obviously going to kind of reshape the saddle to fit obviously it's you know reshaped to fit how the sad how the cupboard door closes onto the saddle will kind of like bend the whole thing and I didn't think about that at all I, well I, I thought about it but I didn't think it would have that much of an impact um, so that for me was quite a quite a big one the other thing was the flocking um, 
she kind of explained afterwards what we didn't quite catch it in the in the video but she kind of explained afterwards you know that if the saddle is not flocked properly and it's not smooth all of those lumps and bumps kind of transfer into the horse's back which makes so much sense and it's kind of stuff that you know but you don't really think well oh okay like you don't practically think about it and think that it would have that much of an impact so for me that was quite profound and um I was like, okay, that, that's quite a serious thing. So after the fact, um, Ty's had physio and stuff in the meantime as well. Physio also took, to look, took a look at the saddle and she kind of confirmed the same thing. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to touch base on that with you guys and just um, check in. I know maybe some of you are like experts in this field and you're probably like, oh, how stupid is she? How could she not know? Well, reality check. Um, it's not a case of I didn't know it's a case of you kind of just brush it off because it seems like such a small thing um, when in reality small things like that can actually have a really big impact on the horse which is something that you don't quite take into consideration like you know and in the back of your head you're like yeah 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 you know you've been told a million times put the saddle nicely on a saddle rack um, uh, when you put it down put it down at the pommel first leaning nicely against something so that it doesn't lose its shape and break and bend and all of that stuff and um, but you don't quite like really take in why um, until like somebody professional actually comes and sits down with you and says listen um, all of this weight will be transferred unevenly on the horse's back and um, the the flocking all the lumps and bumps will really transfer um, those lumps and bumps into his back and it was actually almost directly where those um, lumps and bumps were on the saddle that he was sore in his back so uh, very interesting um, and I urge you guys that to to really get your saddles checked out um, if your horse is presenting any kind of um, discomfort or showing signs of you know small things like swishing tails for me, I always start with the basics, going back to basics, checking saddle, checking teeth, uh, get the physio, get the chiro if needed. Um, rule out all areas of ba like basic pain, things that you can control. And then from there, you know, once you've checked all those boxes, saddle fit, sad the saddle fits, the teeth are done, the back has been, the physio has been, the back is fine, the chiro has been, the, you know, he's happy. Then, then you can move on to, to more serious tests. But for me, once you've done the basics, that should alleviate any discomfort, any pain, um, that sort of thing. So, yeah, I, I hope you guys found this um, somewhat interesting. Uh, I promise I will get better at this vlogging thing. Um, it, is, it is quite new territory for me. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you did find it interesting and you'd like to see more on other topics, I do uh, have another video planned, by the way, more on the welfare side of things. So more touching more on my kind of area and passion points of um, equine psychology. So um, stay tuned. That'll be coming up soon, I hope. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please, please, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want to see more, subscribe. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.